I welcome you for the module 2 lecture 1 of uh, this uh, series. In module 2, we will be discussing about uh, linear metrology, what is uh, linear metrology, what are the various uh, instruments used in uh, uh, linear metrology, those things we will be studying. And then uh, before we start linear metrology, let us try to understand the general care of measuring instruments. When the instruments are in use, how to take care of the instruments and when they are in storage, that means for a long time they are not uh, uh, in use and we are storing them, then how to store, what type of care we should take uh, so that uh, uh, they are uh, protected from the environment. We will also study about classification of uh, measuring instruments, how the instruments are classified based upon the a type of uh, physical quantity that is uh, measured and then based upon whether they are uh, they have graduated scale or uh, uh, no graduations are there and then uh, uh, depending upon uh, the uh, precision and accuracy how they are classified and uh, then very recently nano technology has evolved and what type of uh, uh, metrological instruments are used in the nano metrology that also we will be studying and uh, Finally, we will be dealing with uh, various uh, kinds of linear measuring instruments. Now, let us try to understand the general care of measuring instruments. Now, whenever the measuring instruments are not in use for a long time, it is very essential that uh, corrosion resistance coating is uh, provided on all working surfaces of the instruments. For example, if you take the a micrometer, we should apply the corrosion resistance uh, protective coating like uh, petroleum jelly on the surface of uh, anvil and on the surface of uh, spindle. Similarly, if we take the example of vernier caliper, we have to apply petroleum jelly on all uh, uh, the uh, working surfaces. The, wherever there is a movement, we have to apply wherever there is a, a open uh, uh, surfaces or the machine surfaces are there, we have to apply petroleum jelly so that the surfaces are not uh, corroded. And now, when we use, when we try to use the uh, measuring instruments, it is very essential that the protective coating that is applied should be cleaned properly. All dust particles should be cleaned, uh, protective coating should be cleaned by using uh, maybe some chemical or by using soft cloth. We have to clean all surfaces and then we have to check for smooth movement over entire range. For example, uh, if we have like vernier micrometer, it should the moving jaw should, uh, moving head should move throughout its range smoothly. There should not be any uh, stick slip motion. So, that uh, we have to check. If necessary, uh, we have to make some corrections so that uh, the movement is smooth. And then we should not allow the instruments to fall down so that uh, when they are subjected to impact, the working parts of the instrument may get, uh, uh, they may uh, bend and it becomes uh, unusable. So, it is very essential that uh, while using lot of care should be taken so that they would not fall. And then whenever we are in doubt how to use, we do not know how to use the instruments, we should, it is always better to consult the manual or uh, consult the experts who know about uh, operation of uh, those instruments. So, that uh, uh, we should not, uh, we, we, they are not mishandled. Then uh, it is very essential that whenever we use the instruments, we should not over pressurize or we should not apply excessive pressure so that the moving uh, uh, the jaws or anvils or plungers, they will not uh, uh, impinge the work surfaces. For example, if you, if you over pressurize uh, the thimble of the micrometer, and then the spindle will enter into the workpiece and indentations mark will occur. So, it may damage the workpiece as well as it may damage the spindle. Uh, so, such uh, things should be avoided and uh, it is very essential that uh, we, we should have uh, a proper sense uh, 
of uh, 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 feeling we should have we should feel before uh, we apply pressure and it is always uh, better if we have uh, instruments wherein uh, uh, the application of uh, excessive pressure is uh, avoided such if such a system such a mechanism is there we should we should try to uh, have uh, such instruments and then we should always check for calibration status whether uh, the calibration is required for uh, that instrument uh, when it is required such things we should see whenever calibration is required we have to arrange for sending it for the calibration purpose. Uh, it is also important uh, to avoid uh, direct sunlight and uh, high and low temperatures and high humidity uh, during the storage of measuring instruments and uh, in case of uh, digital instruments it is necessary that uh, we have to remove uh, the battery before storage if we are uh, not using the instruments battery operated instruments for uh, a longer duration and then uh, wherever possible we should use uh, protective cover uh, on the instruments to prevent uh, dust settling on the instruments. Now, after this uh, let us try to understand how the uh, measuring instruments are classified. They are classified based upon the physical quantity that is to be measured. For example, length measurement we need to measure length of the workpiece or uh, breadth of the workpiece, depth of uh, the workpiece or say diameter of a hole. So, depend see this is uh, this represents the single uh, dimension quantity. So, when we use uh, the instruments for uh, single dimension measurement then we say uh, they are length measuring instruments. Then again if the instruments are used for the purpose of measuring angles then we say they are uh, angle measuring instruments. For example, bevel protractor is an example for angle measuring instrument. Then there are some instruments uh, uh, which are meant for measuring the surface roughness of uh, working uh, machined surfaces. For example, uh, uh, the uh, surface uh, tester used uh, to measure the surface roughness. And then in some cases we use the instrument for measurement of uh, form of the workpiece whether there is any uh, out of roundness is there or uh, some uh, 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 drum shape is there or barrel shape is there. So, if we use uh, the instrument to measure such things then we say they are form measuring instruments. Now, based upon accuracy and precision also we can classify the instruments as uh, uh, very accurate instruments and not so accurate instruments. Similarly, very precise instruments and not so precise instruments. Then uh, if the instrument is having a graduated scale, then we say they are graduated uh, instruments and uh, if there is no scale on the instrument, we say non graduated instrument. For example, uh, a spring caliper is a non graduated instrument whereas, a vernier caliper is a graduated instrument and if the instruments are used to check the character for characterization of uh, nanoparticles then we say such thing such instruments are nanometrology instruments. Now, we will study about uh, linear measuring instruments. So, in this uh, in this type of instrument uh, uh, in this classification the measured quantity is length that means, linear measuring instruments they are used for measurement of length, breadth, depth, diameter and such things one dimensional quantities. Now, under this uh, first we will study about uh, various accessories used uh, for the measurement and then we will go for studying uh, different kinds of uh, linear instruments. Now, the cast iron surface plate is a very very important accessory whenever we want to conduct the measurement process. Now, this uh, figure shows a cast iron surface plate. We can see the top surface of uh, the cast iron surface and we can also see different kinds of ribs are there on the sides and then there is provision for inserting the handles on both the sides uh, we can insert the handles. 
so that we can easily uh, lift the lift and uh, move the cast iron surface plate. So, normally they are placed on uh, uh, steel frames as shown uh, in the figure. Now, over to blackboard uh, we can see the under surface of the cast iron surface plate. There will be a lot of uh, ribbing provided, so that the surface plate will not bend due to the uh, weight of the instruments kept on the surface plate. Now, this uh, table uh, shows uh, what are the various uh, sizes available. For example, 300 millimeter by 300 millimeter is a square shaped uh, uh, cast iron surface plate. Similarly, 400 by 400 is again a square uh, shaped uh, cast iron surface plate and then we, ha we can have uh, rectangular shaped uh, surface plates also. Uh, we can get a uh, surface plate of size 3000 millimeter by 1200 millimeter size. They are available in different grades, grade 0, grade 1 and grade 2. Grade 2 is normally used for uh, uh, used in the workshop for uh, uh, regular uh, inspection of the work pieces whereas, grade 0 is used in the calibration and the standards room for calibration purpose. Now, IS uh, the cast iron surface plates are uh, made as per IS 2285 2003 standard. Now, this table shows that uh, these figures they indicate the maximum deviation from flatness over the entire area. For example, for grade 0 and uh, the cast iron surface plate of 300 by 300, the maximum deviation from flatness is 4 micrometer. So, the meaning of this is if we have two parallel plane planes separated by a distance of 4 micrometer, then all the points on the cast iron surface plate top uh, surface all the points should lay within this gap of 4 micrometer. So, that is the meaning of uh, that flatness over the entire area of the cast iron surface plate. For grade 2 for the uh, serial number 1 that is 300 by 300 millimeter sized uh, cast iron plate for grade 2 the flat deviation from flatness is 15 micrometer. Now, these surface plates they are uh, made out of cast iron and uh, they are also available in uh, glass as well as granite. The advantages of uh, uh, glass and granite is they are not subjected to corrosion whereas, cast iron plate is uh, subjected to corrosion if not properly uh, protected. So, whenever the surface plates are not in use, it is necessary that uh, they should be covered with a wooden cover. Now, another advantage of glass and granite uh, surface plate is when a uh, solid object, when a workpiece falls on the surface plate, in case of glass and granite plate, no burr is formed. So, a, a dent will be formed which will not affect uh, the measurement process. Whereas, in the case of cast iron burrs will be formed which may affect the measurement process. So, uh, the, the, we may get some measurement error due to the burr formed. Now, we have uh, some other accessories like uh, angle plate. Now, I am showing uh, an angle plate which is uh, a very important accessory used uh, along with the surface plate. Now, you can see the shape of the angle plate this is uh, L shaped and this is the bottom uh, working surface and this surface is again a working uh, surface which is perpendicular to the bottom surface. So, this is the length of the angle plate and then this is the height of the angle plate and then this is uh, the breadth of the angle plate. Now, it is very essential that this uh, bottom surface and this surface 
should be square. Now, IS uh, 2554 1963 specifies uh, the various uh, sizes and what are the accuracies needed for uh, angle plate. For example, if the size uh, is 125 by 75 by 100 and if uh, the for this uh, particular size the flatness of uh, this working surface uh, should not uh, exceed 5 micrometer. Similarly, this uh, working surface also for the same size of uh, 125 millimeter by 75 millimeter by 100 millimeter the flatness of this bottom surface should not exceed 5 micrometer. Then the squareness of this working surface with the bottom surface. For a height of uh, uh, 100 millimeter the squareness of this surface with the bottom surface should not exceed 10 micrometer. And then the for the same size the parallelism of opposite faces that means, if uh, this is also working surface uh, uh, deviation from parallelism should mean this surface and this surface should not exceed uh, 13 micrometers. Now, we can just see the other uh, side of the angle plate. Now, we can see there is a rib between the vertical plate and the horizontal plate so that uh, the angle plate will be rigid. We can also see three slots here and we have two horizontal slots used for clamping of work pieces. And then uh, we have uh, V block which is another accessory used uh, for the measurement process. Now, uh, we can see a cast iron uh, V block, we can see the V channel and then uh, we have uh, V channel on both the sides. So, this is the top surface and this is the side working surface and this is uh, the end uh, surface. It is necessary that all these surfaces are uh, uh, square to each other. And now, these V blocks are uh, used for uh, clamping uh, cylindrical objects and for marking center of cylindrical objects we can always uh, clamp the work pieces using this uh, type of clamp. So, in between uh, the V channel and the screw we can place the cylindrical object and we can clamp it. Now, there is another uh, uh, accessory known as universal surface gauge. This is used for scribing uh, lines on the work surfaces this uh, inclination can be changed by operating uh, this mechanism. So, that any height can be adjusted and lines can parallel lines can be scribed on the workpiece surface. So, we have another uh, accessory known as engineers uh, square this is now this uh, is uh, engineers uh, square we have the bottom surface and we have uh, the vertical surface here. This is used to check uh, squareness of the work pieces. These are made as per Indian standard 2103-1972 and different grades uh, are uh, available A grade, B grade and C grade depending upon the uh, type of work whether it is used for uh, uh, used in the machine shop or whether it is used in the uh, standards room we need to select appropriate grade. It is uh, very essential that uh, this surface and uh, the bottom surface should be square to each other. Now, these uh, squares engineer squares are used to check uh, squareness of the work pieces. Now, let us assume that this is the work piece and I want to check whether this surface is square with the datum surface. 
So, for that we have to keep the engineer square like this and then we have to take uh, a thin paper and we have to insert the paper between engineer square and the work piece. If it enters it indicates that there is some error, if it does not enter then it indicates that squareness is ok. Now, it is not entering, so squareness of the work piece is ok. Now, uh, we have uh, a steel rule which is the uh, most common instrument for measurement of uh, linear dimensions. Now, you can see here this uh, steel rule is made out of uh, stainless uh, steel and then it is hardened. Now, the range of this uh, scale is it start from uh, 0 and then we have uh, 20 centimeter. So, 0 to 20 centimeter is the range of this and then coming to the resolution uh, we can see here up to 10 centimeter we have a very fine resolution of uh, 0.5 millimeter and then from 10 centimeter to 20 centimeter we have a resolution of 1 millimeter. Now, depending upon the accuracy required we can uh, use uh, this portion wherein resolution is 1 millimeter or if uh, finer accuracy is required we can use uh, 0 to 10 wherein resolution is 0.5 millimeter and then graduations are uh, uh, marked on both the edges and then the graduations are available on both sides also. So, any side we can use. Now, before using this uh, steel rule it is very essential to check whether this end is proper or not. Sometimes this may be worn out in that case we should not use this edge. We should start from uh, uh, one marking and then we should use it and then we should not forget to deduct this uh, 1 centimeter from the reading obtained. Now, I will show how to use this to measure the length of a work piece. Now, you can see here I uh, have a work piece, okay. it is uh, butt against uh, the angle plate. Now, I am keeping uh, this steel rule on the work piece. Okay. And now, you can read. So, this uh, edge is the reference wherein the reading is 0 and then on the other side we have the measurement point. So, now the reading is uh, 35 millimeter that means length of this work piece is 35 millimeter. Now, it is very essential to read uh, the steel rule normal to the steel rule otherwise parallax error may creep in. Now, in case this uh, edge is worn out then how to use this steel rule. I will jo just show how to use the steel rule when the edge is worn out. Now, you can see uh, number 1 is coinciding with uh, one edge of the work piece, this is the reference point and then on the other side we have uh, 45. Now, you can see the observation is not uh, normal to the scale, so there is some parallax error. Now, the reading is difference between the measurement point and reference point is uh, 35 millimeter. Now, uh, I will just show how the cosine error creeps in. Now, you can see we have the work piece and then we need to measure the length of the work piece for that I am using this uh, steel rule. 
the one end of the steel rule is coinciding with this edge. So, this is the reference point and then this is the measurement point. Now, it is reading 40 millimeter. Now, the steel rule is parallel to the physical quantity to be measured that is length. Now, when there is some angle like this, now you can see the steel rule is not parallel to the physical quantity to be measured. So, this is the length of the work piece, but we have placed the steel rule at some angle theta. So, because of this there will be cosine error. So, actually when we measure we get uh, now this is around 41 millimeter, it is showing 41 millimeter whereas, the actual length will be L cos theta. So, this cosine error can be avoided by keeping the steel rule parallel to the quantity to be measured like this. Now, I am explaining how to use a steel rule for outside diameter measurement. Now, I am keeping one edge of the steel rule at this place. So, this is the reference point and then I am slowly adjusting the steel rule. So, that I am measuring the diameter not the chord. So, now the measurement point is at this place and it is showing 4 centimeter. So, the diameter of the work piece is 40 millimeter. So, this is an example for direct measurement wherein we can directly get the size of the physical quantity and there is no need to have any calculations. Now, I am showing a few non graduated instruments. This one is a spring caliper outside spring caliper for measurement of outside dimensions. This is inside caliper for measuring inside dimensions. These are the legs of uh, the caliper and we have a screw and we have a nut and uh, this is the spring which uh, provides uh, necessary tension to the legs. So, similarly we have two legs here for the inside caliper and uh, a screw a knurled nut by rotating this we can adjust the distance between these two measuring points. Now, these edges are uh, hardened to nearly 600 Vickers hardness so that they do not wear uh, much. Now, let me demonstrate how we can use an inside caliper for measurement of uh, inside uh, diameter. Now, we have to insert the caliper both uh, both the legs of the caliper inside the hole and then we have to adjust the screw till we get uh, the diameter. So, slowly we have to rock uh, the inside caliper till we get the minimum uh, dimension. If we take the dimension in this position inclined position there are chances of getting uh, cosine error. So, we should get the minimum uh, dimension and always the instrument should be perpendicular to the work piece like this. So, now I am getting the minimum uh, dimension. Now, we have to remove the instrument from the work piece and then we have to transfer this distance onto the steel rule. Now, we can see one point is coinciding with it graduation mark 10 and then graduation mark 12 is coinciding with this point. So, the distance between these two is uh, 20 millimeter. So, the 
diameter of the hole is 20 millimeter. Now, let me explain how this uh, outside spring caliper is used to get the diameter of the work piece. Now, we have to keep the work piece on the surface plate and we have to hold uh, the caliper like this. We have to rotate the nut. So, that two tips come in contact with the work piece. Now, we should take care that uh, the two tips are in contact at the diameter and now we have to remove this uh, spring caliper from the work piece and then we have to use uh, the steel rule. So now, you can see this tip is in contact with the edge of uh, the steel rule and we have uh, this is the reference point and this is the measurement point. Now, we can take the reading. So, it is giving 40 millimeter that means, the diameter of the work piece is 40 millimeter. Since the spring calipers do not have their own uh, graduated scale, they are used only for transferring the distances. Now, let me conclude this uh, session. Uh, in this session, we learnt about uh, general care of uh, the measuring instruments and then how we can classify the measuring instruments. Also, we learnt about uh, linear uh, measuring instruments, wherein we discussed about uh, the different kinds of accessories like uh, surface plate and then uh, angle plate and then engineers uh, square and then we studied about uh, some of the linear measuring instruments that is uh, steel rule, how to use uh, steel rule for length measurement, how to use steel rule for uh, inside diameter measurement and outside diameter measurement and then how to use uh, uh, spring caliper for transferring the distance from the object to the uh, steel rule. Now, tomorrow, we will continue with uh, the other uh, kinds of instruments used for linear measurement. Thank you. Yeah.